two years ago, World of Warcraft did the unthinkable. It released controller support. While it was a great step for accessibility, it felt very much incomplete. With the Dragonflight expansion, however, came some updates that were clearly meant to uplift the controller experience and potentially head towards a console release someday. But is it any good? Well, let's find out. My name is Quintina, I'm a Final Fantasy XIV controller guide maker whose first real MMORPG was World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King and has been playing MMOs on controllers since Terra. Yeah, Terra. First, let's define what makes a good controller support experience. It needs to 1. be intuitive to new players, 2. be able to do everything in the game without being at a big disadvantage compared to mouse and keyboard players, and 3. be customizable to veteran users who want more than what the default provides. To test how friendly this is to new players, I did a fresh install of the game on a new folder, no add-ons, and I used an account that had never used controller support. Please note this is a review of the built-in support. Yes, there is an add-on called console port that fixes many of these issues and adds even more features. It's an amazing add-on, but this is not a review of console port, and if the dev team is ever considering a console release, it would need the game to be a good experience without add-ons. Therefore, I will mention other add-ons only if necessary for comparisons. Turning on controller support. Let's talk about turning on controller support. In order to do so, you will need to enter a command into the chat. Obviously, this is a major barrier. You have to know how to turn it on. There is nothing in the options to do this and no guide in the game for this. You need access to the chat, so that means you first need to create a character. You don't have to do this for subsequent characters though, as this is a system setting. I imagine this is done on purpose, since the controller support is still in the works, they likely don't want a bunch of people turning it on and expecting it to be perfect. By having a command, it very much gives that feeling of, hey, this is a preview. In the future, however, this would need to be changed. There should be a section in the settings and there should be a prompt when making a new character, especially if a controller is detected. Icons When turning it on for the first time, it will include some default bindings. I'm going to talk about the quality of those default bindings later, but instead let's talk about the icons. I'm so happy that they added them. I did try the controller support when it came out two years ago, and they were not any gamepad icons then, surprisingly. The triangle button would literally just say triangle. Square would say square. It was horrendous, and I did make a review back then if you're interested. The icons do adjust based on the controller. This is what it looks like if I take my setup and hook up an Xbox controller. Personally, I would prefer they give me a choice. I grew up on PlayStation, so I'm used to the PlayStation icons, especially the face buttons, but I prefer the feel of the Switch and Xbox controllers. I find it very confusing to play with the Xbox icons and would much prefer to have the PlayStation icons all the time, regardless of what my actual controller is, at the very least for the buttons that are effectively the same. When using a mouse, the icons do change if you have a regular keybind. Accounting for extra buttons on PlayStation. I really like that on a PlayStation controller, they have support for the touchpad left click, touchpad right click, and share, all at the same time. They even support the PlayStation button. The touchpad itself is also supported as a cursor. The game does not seem to mind that this would be more buttons than an Xbox controller, which means players on a PlayStation controller would have more choice in bindings. Of course, the defaults should apply to both controllers as closely as possible, but a player having the ability to use the extra ones for their own binding customizations is a good thing. Hotbar layout. The next topic is the hotbar layout. There is no cross hotbar or any type of controller-specific hotbar. The bindings are very much shared with the keyword hotbars. This doesn't seem to be an issue at first, for a new player, but it very much would be for a more seasoned player who wants to go back and forth between control schemes. If you change your actions around, you affect both, and then you have to decide whether you need to either accept the change 
or move your actual keybind. This could get quite messy. There is a way to separate them, and that's to take advantage of the 8 hotbars available. For example, you could use 1 to 4 for keyboard, and 5 to 8 for controller. Well, really, 1 would be for both keyboard and controller, then 3 to 4 for keyboard, and 5 to 8 for controller. Or whatever other combination you think of. And you just change which ones are visible based on what you are playing. Otherwise, you could use an add-on to separate them. Um, the only ones I found that fill this need are Button Forge, which allows you to create entirely new hotbars. Most other hotbar add-ons just manipulate the game's existing hotbars. And of course, Console Port, which has its specialty controller cost hotbar. But let's just use the game's hotbars. The new edit mode makes it easy enough to just change things around. You can also use the quick keybind to change things as you go. This is what I made. You can see that it's not too difficult to make a decent hotbar setup with the new edit mode and save the layout. It's honestly great. If the game provided the ability to save keybinds by layout instead of doing it by character or system, it would actually take care of the problem mentioned previously about not having separate things for mouse, keyboard, and controller. Edit mode is unfortunately not available for new players until they get past the beginning quest line, which would be roughly around level 11 or so. Before that, players start with one bar, and then two bars. As far as the hotbar UI goes, it's certainly enough to start with, but I do wish edit mode was available earlier. I also like that edit mode has a setting for always show buttons that is configurable for each extra action bar. However, I really wish there was another setting called Always Show Keybinds. Very few games have this, and it always drives me nuts. Let me illustrate this. You see this section for L1 and how it mirrors a D-pad? Let's say I turn off Always Show Buttons. It looks nice, right? Pretty, just like a controller. But if I remove an action, as expected, it's gone. And now it looks unintuitive, since I was trying to mimic the controller's d-pad. I would much prefer if it would just hide the slots that have no keybinds, rather than hide the slots that have no actions. This is something I did accomplish in my Wrath of the Lich King Classic setup via add-ons, but it would be much better to have such a feature built in. Hotbar keybinds. The hotbar layout aside, the next thing to talk about are the hotbar keybinds. And this is probably an area the developers really should prioritize because they are not good. Let's take a look at the first spot in the hotbar. Your first action, which is automatically placed by the game when you start up and the tutorial makes a point of to highlight this. It ends up on the first slot and there is no controller binding there. They were clearly going for a pattern of here's a button, then L2 with that button. But because they start with cross, and cross is bound to jump, they just skip this one altogether. But anyway, at that point, a new player would have two choices. Either move the action to another spot, or change the keybind. The correct answer is to change the keybind. But a new player might not realize that until they reach the part where you have to use a mount. See, sometimes mounts have special actions. Those go into a special hotbar that uses spot 1, and sometimes 2 and 3. If you don't have those bound in your regular hotbar, you will not have them bound on your special mount hotbar either. So you can't use trample during the questline. This means the starting questline, effectively the tutorial of the game, has two instances where the default keybinds are obviously not good, which would rightfully make a player question if other issues will keep popping up. So let's say a player does decide to change the keybind. Well, the keybind menu is fairly easy to find, good, but it's mixed in with the keyboard keybinds as well. I propose it would be simpler to edit if there was a second keybindings menu called Gamepad Bindings that just had the controller bindings there. Interacting with NPCs and menus. Interacting with NPCs overall works 
fairly well, but menus leave a little to be desired. So let's talk about the good parts. The game has an interact key. This is in controls, which is a little bit confusing. Also confusing is that, as you can see, it would appear I have this turned off. Simply speaking, this setting for turning on or off is only for keyboard players. When using a controller, it is always enabled. The same is true for another feature called Enable Action Targeting, found in Combat. This setting is only for mouse and keyboard, because it is always on when using a controller. Combined? This is amazing. You get close to what you wish to interact with or attack, and it will highlight the target, so you just get your target highlighted and you press your interact key. For enemies, highlight the target by getting close, and you can either interact to start auto attack or use a targeted combat skill. Better yet, at least in my opinion, is if you go to the accessibility settings in general for interact key icons. If you have it set to show all, your target will have a little icon. If you have it set to default, it will show icons for some interactions, but not all. I like show all. It makes it super easy to tell which enemy the dynamic targeting is picking out. The icon also makes it clear that the interact key does more than just talk to NPCs for you, or start auto-attacking. It has the ability to automatically use quest items when a correct target is selected. This is awesome. Not having to go grab an item from your bag or figure out how to click it from the quest list is just great. I don't know if every quest with quest items supports it, but I sure hope so. So there's a lot to love about what they've done with interactivity. But of course, I have to talk about the bad things too. For menus, whether it's going through your inventory, spell books, selling items, or even just accepting a quest, you end up in what I will call cursor mode. At which point you would use your analog stick to move the mouse, and then you use R2 for right click and R1 for left click. You can also enter this cursor mode anytime by pressing your escape button. If you're using controller instead of going to the menu, it ends up doing cursor mode, as long as you have no modifiers. Cursor mode is all right. It's usable, it's fairly intuitive because it's just a mouse, and it's a great option for anything that doesn't have better support. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. It's a fallback, and hopefully they will add some better support. I would much rather the game be smart enough to realize that if I just open my backpack, then my D-pad should override and be used to navigate through my items. Same with navigating my spellbook and having a way to assign things to my hotbars from there. I already discussed the default bindings for the hotbars, but what about everything else? I would imagine that a new player would somewhat expect to have to adjust their hotbar setup, but that other things such as targeting would be built in. Well, so what are those non-hotbar bindings by default? I already mentioned the interact key in control, but we also have tap target enemies, tap target nearest friend, that's players and friendly NPCs, create a focus target, and target your focus target. This would be great for healers to keep on their tanks and dungeon content. Zoom in, zoom out, center camera, open all bags, characters, character panel, spell book, which seems to be broken, the binding, you, you might have to redo it, and world map. Jump and escape. Escape is what takes you to cursor mode where R1 and R2 is used, are used as left click and right click. I do feel like those bindings are okay to start with, but chances are you will be making some changes as you go, but they really are okay for the time being. There is a problem with non hunt bar bindings, and it's that you have to remember them and that can get really difficult if you haven't played in a while. It's fine for something like jump, because a lot of games have jump on cross. But for the character page and the spellbook, that's going to be easy to forget. Actually, the spellbook binding seems to be broken, I had to redo it. You could put them in macros and then assign those to your hotbar. It's an option. But a better option, if we pretend for a moment that the devs would be interested in what I have to say, would be to reuse the icons they have in the system menu. Let me drag that to the hotbar. 
Let's also put a new tab in the spellbook called System, where you can have your menu items and place them on your hotbar. Let me go through the menu using my controller. This altogether would allow for easier customization once a player is ready to move on from the default key buttons. System configuration. Of course, you might notice that the settings menu doesn't let you change certain things. Sure, you can change keybinds and certain behaviors, but not which button to use as a modifier. By default, it's L1 and L2. You might assume I have an issue with that given that I play a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, but I'm actually okay with this. Still, there are others who will want to change that, and it's possible, just not in settings. But personally, what I really wanted to change was the touchpad cursor. I really just hate having that, and even in other games, I try to turn it off if I can. But whether you're changing your modifier or turning off the touchpad cursor, you will need to enable console mode. So you write in console enable one, then press your backtick key, then you can change some settings. However, this isn't very user-friendly. The goal should, of course, to have this in the UI somewhere, something which console port offers. But I do need to add that I love how customizable this is. Skills with selections. Some classes have skills that let you select other skills. For example, a Warlock's pet summon skill lets you choose from other pets. The only way to actually make that selection is to activate the selection, then enter cursor mode so you can click on it. This would be terrible in some situations, so right now it would be much better to place the individual skills around. Then we've got specialty hotbars. Pet actions and actions in other specialty hotbars are also not accessible by default without using cursor mode. You do have the ability to customize that in keybinds if you want to, but the easier way is to use cursor mode to drag the actions you care about onto your hotbars. Emotes. Another part of the starting quest line is using emotes. Right now, the only way to do so would be to reach to your keyboard to either type in your chat or to make a macro to assign to your hotbars. It would be good to add an emote menu with icons that can be placed on hotbars. So, how would I rate this? Overall, it's actually quite decent. I could, if I wanted to, play the whole game with the built-in support, though there would be a fair amount of cursor mode. I also know that there are things I might not have mentioned, but this video is already long enough. I do think that console port fills in a lot of gaps when it comes to the user interface of managing your settings, and it does come with a cross hotbar if you want one, and a raid cursor for healing. Button Forge is also an option if you want to have completely separate hotbars. The standard hotbars are nice though, and combined with other customizations, you could do something decent like this. I'm going to tweak this a little bit more, and then I might do some follow-up videos with what I've come up with, both with and without add-ons. I'm going to tweak this a bit more, and then I might do some follow-up videos on what I've come up with, both with and without add-ons. And with all that, I'm going to apologize for how long this is, because it's, it's quite long, but there were a lot of things to talk about, and I will see you for the next one. Oh yeah, you should, you know, like, I don't know, hit the like button or something. Maybe leave a comment. Or not. I don't care. You do you. Bye-bye. <laughs>